Today we will discuss a case of uh, atrial flutter uh, operated by Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. John Camel. Uh, okay. Uh, our case is a male patient, uh, 43 years old, uh, with history of rheumatic heart disease, uh, severe mitral stenosis with balloon mitral valvotomy. Uh, ejection fraction after balloon mitral valvotomy was uh, 55% uh, uh, with preserved ejection fraction. He was presented with uh, incessant uh, narrow complex tachycardia. Uh, echocardiography showed dilated LV dimensions with impaired LV systolic function. Ejection fraction was uh, 32%. Okay, this is uh, ECG at the presentation to uh, typical atrial flutter, uh, uh, as we can appreciate here, it is positive in uh, uh, V1, uh, positive flutter in V1, negative in inferior leads, okay. So we, the plan was uh, uh, caster ablation. Uh, 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 we performed the trans surgical echo prior to the uh, ablation, at the, at the setting of ablation. Uh, 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 left atrial appendage was free. So uh, after insertion, okay. uh, caster insertion, we inserted the decabular caster in uh, coronary sinus, uh, hollow caster in right atrium, and the ablation caster at the uh, irrigated ablation caster at the site of uh, cubitracus isthmus. Uh, after insertion of the caster, now we see the typical counterclockwise uh, uh, pattern, uh, uh, codocranial, uh, 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 codocranial activation of the septum and the craniocodal activation of the lateral free wall uh, of the right atrium. Uh, so, uh, uh, as we can appreciate here in the ECG, okay. Uh, so we started entrainment, the tachycardiocycle lens before entrainment was uh, 255 milli, uh, millisecond. Uh, basing from the uh, ablation caster at the uh, Kivut Rikos, the isthmus showed uh, at uh, 20 to, uh, 230 millisecond, uh, uh, 15 to 20 millisecond uh, faster than the tachycardiocycle lens showed accelerated atrial rate to uh, 230 millisecond with concealed fusion. BBI minus tachycardiocycle lens was zero. Uh, so well, it's a critical isthmus, so it is a CTI dependent uh, counterclockwise uh, atrial uh, flutter. So uh, we started ablation. The ablation was, was irrigated tip caster uh, at bar uh, 35 to 40, temperature 48. Uh, at the start of the ablation, we started ablation at the, uh, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 7 o'clock. Uh, uh, medial uh, uh, septum. Uh, uh, the central and lateral uh, lines, uh, but uh, uh, at first, uh, ablation caster has not was good support. There's no good support, and uh, as you see here, in uh, as the ablation as the ablation uh, caster, there is no good ECGs. There is no good contact. So we started uh, we used the axillary sheath uh, for uh, a better support and better uh, uh, and better uh, contact. So this is the ECG uh, the tracing after the agile cheese. So and we started the ablation. Uh, uh, we made three lines, uh, but uh, after uh, after meeting lines, the tachycardia was terminated, uh, but it was terminated by a BEC. Uh, uh, so uh, the, is this termination sufficient to confirm successful line of block? Now we say no, because it's terminated by BEC and we didn't confirm bidirectional block. So we started to confirm bidirectional block by basing from uh, proximal coronal sinus tessa uh, washer. So uh, um, when starting uh, uh, basing, we can see here a uh, conversion uh, pattern. So uh, um, conduction through the kivotrakas uh, was still present. So we uh, measured the time interval from the basing to the proximal halo to from uh, halo one to, uh, as a um, uh, marker for the ablation success. Yeah, and we uh, also made uh, uh, basing from proximal HAL 1 2, and we measured the time interval. Uh, so uh, the patient returned to sinus rhythm, so we started basing from coronary, proximal coronary sinus, and we ablated while basing from coronary sinus. Our target was to uh, revert to reversion of the uh, 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 activation pattern, uh, so it is sequential rather than uh, conversion pattern. Um, this is after mapping, after uh, uh, the end of ablation, with return of the se uh, sequential activation pattern uh, at the uh, halocaster. So we return it back to the confirmation of the bidirectional block. 
Uh, so, uh, after basing from proximal coronary sinus, the conduction time was increased by more than 50 milliseconds at uh, uh, HAL 1, 1, 1 and 2. It, it was now 182. Uh, Before it was 125. And uh, from the uh, basing from uh, proximal halo value showed the same uh, increase in conduction time by more than 50 milliseconds. So uh, this is uh, uh, activation pattern after successful ablation. Uh, we can appreciate here the normal uh, craniocaudal activation of the uh, uh, lateral free wall and the uh, uh, craniocaudal activation of the septum. Okay, this is the normal ECG uh, af um, after uh, after ablation with return of the normal sinus rhythm. So, what's uh, atrial flutter? Atrial flutter is a type of supraventricular tachycardia caused by reentrant uh, circuit within the right atrium of the left atrium. It can cause significant symptoms, uh, severe adverse effect, including embolic stroke, really tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. Our patient here was suspected tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy because it was normal function, and then. Uh, uh, the fun uh, function deteriorated after the presence of uh, atrial flutter. So, uh, what's the ablation site? The ablation site, uh, and usually it's three sites central C, uh, cave of the isthmus, lateral, and medial cave of the isthmus. Central cave of the isthmus, uh, we take it in the LAO view at six o'clock. It is the narrowest and thinnest musculature. Lateral cave of the isthmus, it is uh, at seven o'clock in LAO view. Uh, no bouch, second right atrial musculature, terminate, uh, terminal bacterial muscles are present. And medial cave uh, of the isthmus is five o'clock, dev uh, devoid of bacterial muscle but contain thickest uh, atrial muscular layer and nearest to the RC and the nodal extension. At we uh, we uh, so we uh, gain successful ablation at six o'clock in our case in the lateral uh, central uh, CTI. So what is the method of confirming in, uh, the uh, successful uh, by uh, ventricular by uh, uh, bidirectional block uh, uh, confirming the cave trichosome isthmus block. So, first is the atrial activation sequence, should be uh, craniocaudal activation from right atrial inferior free wall with uh, proximal coronary sinus spacing and the craniocaudal activation of the right atrial septum with inferior infralateral right atrial basing. Uh, uh, but uh, you should be careful. Uh, uh, before mapping uh, adjacent, uh, mapping the adjacent uh, ablation line for slow conduction around the ablation line from the contralateral side of the ablation uh, line. Uh, second, we have wide split electrocardiogram along the entire ablation line. It should be recorded through the ablation caster. It should be more than uh, 90, more than or equal 90 uh, millisecond at the old sites and with less than or equal 50 millisecond maximal variation among all sites. Uh, uh, um, more than 20, 90 millisecond uh, recording uh, um, uh, in time interval indicates the gaps in the line. So, uh, third uh, way, uh, the trans isthmus interval counterclockwise block more than 50% increase in time interval between basing stimuli from the infralateral tricuspid annulus and to electrocardiogram in uh, proximal coronary sinus and clockwise block more than 50% increase in time interval between basing uh, from proximal coronary sinus to uh, the lateral line. Uh, so, uh, but it also must be uh, uh, minimal, mere by millisecond, not less than mere by millisecond. Uh, so, uh, uh, a hint about arrhythmia-induced uh, cardiomyopathy, possible triggers, mediators, effect, and recovery. Uh, mostly, it's tachycardia, frequent BVCs, AF. The triggers of tachycardia is increased heart rate, or frequent BVCs, is LV dysynchrony, AV dissociation, heart rate irregularity. Uh, intermittent tachycardia, sympathetic denervation, uh, sympathetic dysregulation, post extrasystolic potentiation, and atrial fibrillation is heart rate irregularity, sympathetic dysregulation, and loss of atrial contra contraction. The mediators of tachycardia is, is calcium uh, overload and calcium mishandling. In frequent BVCs, mostly is calcium overload. Calcium mishandling is questionable. Uh, and mediator of atrial fibrillation, um, calcium uh, mishandling. Uh, uh, so the effect of tachycardia cause fibrosis. Myocardial and recurrently modeling contractile dysfunction, uh, neurohormonal activation, frequent BVCs cause myocyte and electrolyte remodeling contractile dysfunction, maybe fibrosis. With atrial fibrillation, it may uh, affect uh, contribute and contractile dysfunction. 
And what will happen after arrhythmia suppression? After arrhythmia suppression, the recovery of tachycardia causes normalization of LV ejection fraction, ventricular dilatation, diastolic dysfunction, reactive hypertrophy, resistant fibrosis. While infrequent BVCs, it causes normalization of LV ejection fraction and dimensions. In atrial fibrillation, it may uh, um, help in uh, normalization of LV ejection fraction. Thank you. They can have And now, uh, cut me over here. The ablaq this slide adima or be improve or he did this slide adima. I was session how. لا مش حس دي اصلا ابليشن ما حصلناش اسم الاول خالص ممكن ثانيه نجيبه تعتمد بس على من الديستال هالو تعتمد بس على الديوريشن زي في الحاله دي ولا هتعتمد على الاكتيفيشن فاكتور اللي فيه اسطره او السي اس اللي هي بس ان انا احط هيس يعني انا احط اسطرع عن الهيس اشوف ايه اللي علشان علشان الكوندكشن برضو هو هو يعني انت حضرتك تقصد ال الاكتيفيشن بس انا بتكلم على الاكتيفيشن بتاعتي دلوقتي انت بتست من الديستال هالو للبروكسيمال سي اس برايور للسي اس 9 و10 عشان يبقى ده اكتيفيشن تعتمدوا على على الديوريشن بس؟ اهو احنا احنا لما عملنا هنا اعتمدنا على الديوريشن بس احنا كنا حاطين الاول اسطره الابليشن في الاول عند الهس بس ما جابتش يعني ما 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 اعتمدناش عليها بعدها يعني ما تطرقناش لكده احنا البلوك كان واضح والترمينيشن حصل فما يعني اعتمدنا اكتر اعتمدنا اكتر على التايمنج دلتا تشينج في في التشينج في التايم والكونفيرميشن ان احنا عندنا لاين اوف بلوك مع البروكسيمال ابليشن شكرا مساء الخير ازي حضراتكم؟ Today I am going to present a case about scar related VT. Let's start. ممكن نبدأ؟ ممكن نبدأ معايا؟ ماشي ممكن نبدأ نعرضها على So our patient is a 69-year-old male, and he has uh, he's a ischemic heart disease patient. He had MI and PCI to the LCX uh, in 2017. He presented with recurrent VT and syncope in 2018. He had a single ICD implanted for secondary prevention in 2019, and uh, he had recurrent paroxysmal attacks of atrial fibrillation. 
His resting ECG uh, showed uh, sinus rhythm with, uh, with PVCs. And, um, and this patient, uh, on, uh, he, uh, on the device interrogation, he had uh, frequent uh, episodes of VT and uh, frequent, uh, and frequent uh, ICD shocks. Uh, and uh, okay. uh, he had frequent VT episodes and frequent PVCs on uh, interrogation of, uh, of his ICD, and he complained of uh, uh, receiving uh, many ICD shocks in the last year. Uh, his VT uh, had the same uh, morphology as uh, the pre predominant uh, uh, PVC that we were seeing uh, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the programmer. And his echo uh, showed a dilatation of um, LV dimensions and the uh, ejection fraction was impaired in 40%. And his, he had dilated aortic with 4.6 with moderate aortic regurg. Um, he had frequent shocks for true VT despite uh, optimal medical uh, treatment. Uh, he was maintained on amiodarone, uh, beta blockers, and Tresto, uh, dapagliflozin. Lazic, Spironolactone, Atorvastatin, and Rivaroxaban. So we plan to do an EP study and ablation for this patient to decrease the burden of the ICD shocks. This is uh, the resting ECG of our patient. He had more than one morphology. Uh, we started uh, planning and then we, uh, we we brought this patient to uh, for 3D ablation uh, using the CAR2 system. So, um, well, of course, we uh, we did this procedure under uh, general anesthesia and uh, we used the continuous ACT monitoring uh, because we are we are in the left side and uh, we, we use the smart touch. Okay. This is the beginning of uh, our study. Sometimes the PVCs were not that frequent. Okay, he, he had VT more than a high PVC burden. So, uh, but they were coming though. So our plan was to uh, perform a, a fast anatomical map for this patient and do a, a voltage map to see the areas of uh, the low voltage and areas of scarring and uh, uh, maybe we could be able to do uh, substrate modification for this patient. Okay. Um, so we started doing a uh, fast anatomical map and uh, acquiring the voltage map and uh, uh, it could have been easier if we used a multipolar catheter such as the, the pentaray catheter which is it's a, it's a friendly catheter in, in the left ventricle and we can, we, can, we can utilize that and we were able to see areas of uh, low voltage uh, and scarring uh, along the uh, uh, inferior septal uh, LV wall and it was extending from the basal mid and up till the apical uh, left ventricle infraceptal wall. We started by, abla uh, by ablation at the, at the sites of, uh, of the low uh, voltage uh, scene and we were targeting the, uh, the lava or the local abnormal uh, ventricular activity and uh, while we were ablating the, 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 uh, the uh, the predominant PVC has uh, disappeared totally after after doing uh, a substrate modification for this patient. He waited also for like 45 minutes uh, without recurrence of this PVC and uh, there was no VT induced in this patient. That's it. This is the ECG post ablation with no PVCs uh, of his resting ECG. And uh, uh, take home messages for this case patients treated with VT ablation after an ICD shock has significantly lower risk of death, heart failure, and hospitalization than patients uh, who were managed medically only. 
the adverse event rates after VT ablation were similar to the adverse ev event rates with, uh, of in patients without VT and shocks. Uh, the other take home message is utilizing 3D equipment uh, with the multipolar catheters such, such as the pent ray catheter and the contact force, the ablation index makes it safer to be able to uh, ablate within the left uh, ventricle and uh, to make the procedure uh, uh, shorter uh, and thus decreasing the rate of uh, possible complications. Thank you. السلام عليكم جميعا ازيكم اخبركم ايه؟ تحت الاوتو فيجوال تحت شيلوه Our gentleman, 47 uh, years old uh, male, can manage a best medical history. We can't have history of coronary artery disease. For 921, gave his table from the hospital for a month. And white complex tachycardia. We can him dynamically unstable. We had this shock. Then, with the paper, we can the basic labs and the echo. The labs are not normal. In the paper, we have written that we have a rhythm strip for white complex tachycardia. ريزم ستريب بس مش 12 بليد اي سي جي وفاست والريسلنج اي سي جي نورمال ساينس ريزم بس في تي ويف انفرجن في الانفيريور ليدز عدنا الايكو عندنا تاني لقينا انه الليجكشن فراكشن فير وذ نورمال ال في وول ثيكنس اند دايمنشنز نورمال كارديك فالفز اند نورمال سايد رايت سايد ابتدينا اميداروم ابتدينا ب كونكور وريفيرت فور فيرزر اسسمنت الفيرزر اسسمنت كان الكارديك ام ار اي عيان عنده وايت كومبلكس تيكارديا وعنده فير ال في ايجكشن فراكشن حبينا نبتدي بالسي ام ار السي ام ار لا ورانا انه البيشنت عنده مايلدلي امبيرد ايجكشن فراكشن ايجكشن فراكشن كانت 45% مايلدلي دايليتد ال في في سيجمنتال والموشن اندر مالتي المعلومه الاهم ان كان عنده التيبيكال سكار اوف دايليت كارديو مايوباتي في البيزل والميد لاترال وول ما كانش في ايفيدنس اكتف مايوكاردايتس ونورمال رايت سايد في وجود السكار والوايت كومبلكس تاكيكارديا طبعا كان الجاد فيلنج ان احنا انه دي في تي لكن احنا عارفين ان احنا في الميديسن مش بنشتغل بالاسامبشن لازم نكونفيرم الدايجنوزس سبيشلي انه القرار اللي هتاخده بعد كده هو قرار اي سي دي لو هي وايت كومبلكس تاكيكارديا فكان نكست ستاب ان احنا نعمل اي بي ستادي نكونفيرم الدايجنوزس التاكيكارديا كانت ديوز ب بروجرام فينتريكولار ستيميليشن المفروض كنت اجيب السي اس شانل بس كان الستادي جزء منها لوست كان عندنا في اي ديسوشيشن ال 12 بليد اي سي جي للتاكي كارديا اول الجزء الاولاني ده البروجرام فينتريكولار ستيميليشن ثم التاكي كارديا انديوز ثم عملنا اوفر درايف بيسنج عشان نترمينيت التاكي كارديا التاكي كارديا هنلاقي ليها الرايت باوند برانش بلوك مورفولوجي ونيجاتيف في الانفير ليدز فيمشي مع ال... كمان المكان السكار اللي موجود فده ميكس لوجيك انه دي سكار اوف دايت كارديو مايوباثي والفي تي اكزت منها مع السكار اللي لقيناها في السي ام ار. العيان في نفس السيتنج ركبنا له سنجل تشامبر اي سي دي فور سكند ريفنشن اوف سادن كارديك ده وابتدينا هي كانت ايبيسود واحده لل... للفي تي فابتدينا ببيتا كور 40 مرتين في اليوم وفولو اب. الفولو اب لقينا ان بيحصل ناقصين في تي ايبيسودز عملنا اب تايتريشن لسوتالول 80 تويس ديلي 
وبعدين العيان جاله سستين بي تي ابيسود ابتدينا اميدارون وتصفيه الاميدارون جات له البي تي تاني فكان البلان واضحه ان احنا هنخش فور بي تي ابليش اليوجوال بريبريشن للعيانين البي تي انفورم كونسنت بون ديسابل ثيرابي جنرال انسيزيا وطبعا نبقى حاسبين قبليها بانس سكور يمكن احنا برضو هو العيان ده اتعمل في القصر العيني ما عندناش يعني ادفانس تيمو دايناميك سبورت لكن لو حسبنا السكور بتاعه هنلاقي لو ريسك لعيان اقل من 60 سنه ما عندوش سكيمي كارديو ما بقى ثانيه فانكشن بلس هو ما كانش سيمتوماتيك اصلا الهارت فيلير ما عندوش بالمري ار ديزيز مش دايابيتيك فهو لو ريسك لو بروفايل واليوجوال بقى ارتيريال لاين عشان هيمو دايناميك مونيتورنج واليوريني كاتر والاي سي تي كابت من 300 ل 350 للاكسس احنا من الاول داخلين على ابي كارد البي تي فاحنا هنعمل ابي كارد الاكسس واحنا في البي تي لما بنقرر ان احنا نشتغل ابي واندو بيبقى ترتيب الاكسس كالاتي الابي كارد الاكسس بالظبط سي بويد عشان قبل ما ندي الهبنه وبعدين لازم يكون عندنا ارتيريال فيمورال تشيس عشان هنخش الال في ريترو جريد ولو في بلان ان احنا هنخش ترانسبتال يبقى بعد الابي كارد اللي يبقى ترانسبتال عشان ندي هابرين يبقى هنخش ال ال في انتي جريد ثم ريترو ندي هابرين ونبقى ريدي بشيس من فيمورال لو هنخش ريترو جريد واستخدمنا سمارت توتش الابي كارد بانكشر احنا بنجيب الابي كارد بانكشر في الديد لاترال فيو يمكن الصوره مش احسن حاجه بتاعت الفلورو بس الديد لاترال فيو بيسهل لنا حاجتين ان احنا ما نعملش انترا ابدومينال فانكشن ونعمل انجري لانترا ابدومينال ستراكشر ليفر او كده تاني حاجه بيسهل لنا احنا نخش على الانتيرير سيرفيس بتاع الهارت تمام ما نخشش بوستيرير ده بيسهل لنا المانوفابيلتي النيد اللي استخدمناها هي الشيبا نيدل 18 جيج 6 انش دي اللي كانت متوفره ساعتها طبعا في تو نيدل اللي هي الكلاسيك اللي القصه دي خلينا اكسبيرينس مع تو نيدل ان هي برام هي بيبل بتاعها ناعم وكيرفد وهي ديديكيت للقصه دي ان هي قصيره لو عيان اوبيز طولها هيخلص قبل ما توصل للهارت في عيان كان كانسل مثلا في حاجه زي كده استخدمنا الشيبا نيدل وبرده في الستاف بتاعت الابي كارد فانكشر انه الاول نخش بالنيدل على الانتير وول اوف ذا هارت ونويت لحد ما نحس ان هي يلدد او جيف اواي المفروض ان احنا ما نبقاش عنيفين علشان ما يبقاش في فرصه علشان ما نخش الارض دي وبنتشيك قبل ما نعدي واير ان احنا بنحقن صبغه بسيطه يمكن حتى لو اقل من كده عشان نشوف لارينج للضاي حوالين الهارت في البريكاردين وممكن تعدي بيتس اي واير برده حاجه رفيعه تاكد ان هو بيلف حول الهارت ثم تعدي الواير بتاعك لو حقنت صبغه جامد في دراي تاب غالبا النيدل هتخرج منك او هتغير مكانك او هتبقى تخبط في الفنتكل تعمل ستينج هنا فيبقى الفيلد بالنسبه لك بعد كده صعب تاخد فيه محاولات صعبه فلازم تبقى الفانكشن اللي بيكارد دي جن دخلنا وحطينا لونج شيس الشيس ده شيس فري فيس برده كلاسيكلي او الافضل ان هو يبقى ديفلكتبل اجيلس شيس الاجيلس عندنا غالي قوي واللي موجود في مصر كان اللونج اجيلس برده بيستخدموا شورت اجيلس شيس المهم حطينا قسطرتنا وبقينا في البريكارديوم ونستارت تو ماب وكان المابز اللي هنعملها في ظل ان التاكي كارد بتاعته كانت فيري فاست انه احنا هنعمل فولتج ماب وهنعمل سبستريت ماب ومش هنعمل اكتيفيشن ماب وما ابتديناش باندكشن للتاكي كارد لان كان كان فيري فاست وكان هيمو دايناميك اند ستيل وكان في الجيل اوريدي من غير الاميدارون دي الفولتج ماب ده كارتو سيستم ومعموله من نص الواحد ونص الفايلت هو الهيلثي مايكارديوم والاحمر هو السكار وبينهم ميكس بقى فايبل تيشو وسكار هنلاقي هنا خلينا نسال لو بصينا على البي اي فيو ده البوستيريو بارت او ده اللاترال بارت من الهارت البوستيريو بارت من الهارت وده ده ماشي مع المكان السكار اللي كان في السي ام ار ده الاي بي فيو وهنا برضو هنلاقي ارياز اوف لو فولتج موجوده على السيرفيس اوف ذا هارت ده السيرفيس اوف ذا هارت بقى مش ال في وده اكسبكتد في في عند الار في عشان الاي بي كارد البادو فات ما يبقاش سكورنج او يعني انهيلثي تشو رحنا عند الاريا اوف انترست ابتدينا نعمل فيها ندور فيها على اللافز لوكال ابنورمال فنتريكلر اكتيفيشنز ولقينا انه عند الايدجز اوف ذا سكار بينامبرا في ليت سيجنالز وكملنا مابينج وعملنا اكتيفيشن ماب لللافا الليتست سيجنال هي لونها فايلت هنلاقي انه الليتست سيجنالز هي اللي كان لقينا فيها 
الليت بوتنشلز هنا التو مابس قصاد بعض الفولتج ماب والاماكن اللي فينا اللي فيها لو سيجنال مع اللافا ماب وعملنا ار اف على الاريا اوف انترست قبل ما نعمل الار اف عملنا حاجتين صورنا كرونري انجيوجرام عشان نبقى متاكدين ان احنا بعيد عن ايبي كارديال كرونري المفروض الاريا سيف تبقى من نص سنتي لسنتي آه كمان عملنا بيسنج ات هاي اوتبوت عشان نكسكلود ان احنا عند فرينج الفرينج بيبقى اكتر عند اللاترال آه وول لكن برضو عملنا بيسنج ات هاي اوتبوت كنا في مكان سيف للاثنين عملنا ار اف على الاري اوف انترست وبعدين لقينا انه اللافاز كمان ابولشت دي الماب من غير الابليشن بوينتس او الابليشن بوينتس اقل هنلاقي انه الارياز الليت اللي كان فيها اللافاز بعد الابليشن بقى وبعد اللافا ابوليشن اتغير الاكتيفيشن بتاعها ودخلنا بعد كده اندوكارديال ماب فور يعني كومبليشن اوف مابينج فالال في اندوكارديوم كان هيلثي ما كانش فيه اي سكورينج وعملنا اندكشن لتاكي كارديا بعد كان مفيش في تي انديوس دي سوبر امبوز مابز للاندوكارديال ماب والابي كارديال ماب وحاطين الابيشن بوينتس يعني قصاد بعض لكن مفيش معلومه جديده في الفول اب العيان ما كان فري اوف في تي ابيسودز ودينا ان احنا بعد ست شهور نوزدو اول انتي اريزميك ميديكيشنز كان على بيتا بلوكرز بس هنقول بوسيبل كومبليكيشنز اوف ابي كارديال اكسس اند بيري كارديتس Uh, وده بيحصل up to 20% of cases uh, حلوا ان احنا نحقن uh, intra-pericardial uh, steroids وفي موصوف systemic steroids intra-pericardial steroid اللي هو try amcinilone 2 mg per kg هو ده اللي كان متوصف uh, عشان البينز البوست وعلشان كمان لو العيان ده بذات العيانين دايليتي كارديوموبافي ده دايليتي كارديوموبافي ده progressive disease وورد ان هو يحتاج a second VT ablation فيبقى عنده ال uh, البريكاردي سبيس او البريكاردي سبيس ما فيهوش ادهيجنز يقدر يخش تاني لو محتاجين يخش تاني. ان ادفرت ار في بانكشر ده بن افويد ان احنا لو قادرين نخش من غير بلاد تندرز يبقى تمام ان احنا واحنا بنعمل البريكاردي بانكشر نبقى كوشس ونتاكد ان مكاننا بضاي او بواير قبل ما نحط الشيس. البريكاردي كرونري انجري سواء بقى بلاسريشن بيربوريشن سبازم كل ده هيبقى افويد ان احنا بنحقن الكرونري قبل ما نعمل ار اف. سيم برضه فرينك نيرف انجري بين بيس اوف هاي اوت بوت ونكسكلود ان احنا فرينك فاكشر ولو مضطرين نكوي في حته وفيها فرينك منصوص ان احنا ممكن نحط بالون وننفخها عشان نبعد الفرينك عن الابي كارديوم منصوص كمان ان احنا ممكن نحقن صلاين هي كلها محاولات ان احنا نبعد الابي كارديوم عن الـ عن المايكارديوم انتر ابدومينال بليدنج من الابي كارديوم فانكشن وده بتبقى فويد ان احنا نبقى داخلين في فيو ساعدنا على كده
مساء الخير انا هقدم حاله نارو كومبلكس تايكارديا 32 years old gentleman complaining of intermittent palpitation with increased frequency lately no past medical history and normal echo ده كان الاي سي جي كان طبعا بي ار اس ديوريشن يمكن على الابر ليميت 120 ملي سكندز ممكن يبقى في ديبيت اذا كان في مثلا دي تعتبر تعتبر بي ويف ولا لا هنا مكان اخر هل ممكن يكون في بي ويف ولا لا فاحنا خدنا الديسيجن انه هنشوف برضو دلوقتي الساين اس اس جي انه العيان ممكن يكون هنا عندنا الانديكيشن دايجنوستيك وثيرابيوتيك في نفس الوقت لما ندخل اي بي ستادي ده الاي سي جي ساينس ريتم وبرضه نشوف نلاقي يمكن نلاقي الكيو ار اس ديوريشن نفس نفس الديوريشن والاكسس نفس الاكسس بورد سو وي بروسيدد وذ اي بي ستادي As we can see, the decapolar catheter in the CS, the RV catheter, and we advanced the ablation catheter used for uh, the RE map. The hand up today, na, ehna patient can be able to frequent tachycardia. The idea, hatta during the study, fa the spontaneous tachycardia of the patient, fa we can see that we have an eccentric conduction from the right side. فده يحط لنا في possibility right atrial tachycardia versus right accessory pathway. ابتدينا نحمل التريننج للتايكارديا هنا طبعا التايكارديا سايكل لينث كان 382 ملي سكندز فاحنا ابتدينا نعمل اوفر دايف بيسنج باي 370 كابتشرنج و لقينا الباترن بعد كده طبعا في اي في فده اكسكلودنج الاتيرا تايكارديا هنا نفضل تاني نرجع للرايت اكسسوري باث واي تو كونفيرم ابتدينا uh, نحسب البوست بيسنج انترفال ماينس تايكارديا سايكل لينت ات واز اباوت 40 ملي سكندز اند ذس كونفيرمد اي في ار تي وي كونسيدر از ا كونسيد رايت اكسسوري باث واي لانه ما كانش في اكسسوري باث واي اون ميني اي سي جيز وذ ذا بيج اند ديورنج ذا ستادي از ويل Uh, so here we pulled uh, the coronary sinus, the uh, catheter, the decapolar from the coronary sinus, and we use it as a, a mapping catheter on the uh, tricuspid valve. Here are the attempts to get to the shortest VA interval. يعني في ستريبس طبعا كتيره دي بس المحاولات بتاعتنا لحد ما نحدد البيست سايت فور او الكلوزست سايت للاكسسوري باث واي وهنا وصلنا الى ما يبدو ان هو في اي فيري نير على التيب بتاعت الابليشن كاثيتر طبعا موجوده في الرايت اتريم دلوقتي دي طبعا كنا ده زي ما قلنا انه الديكابولر على التريكاسبيد بنعمل مابينج وهنا ابتدينا نعمل ابليشن على البيست سايت هو مش مش نفس الصوره دي بالظبط But we reached the best site for ablation, and we ablated 35 watt for 60 seconds. Alhamdulillah, the ablation can successful. We amend the confirmation by post ablation pacing. We, as you can see, there is dissociation between the RV pacing and the right, the right atrial waves. That's about the EP team, and thank you. Thank you, sharing your Can screen. You see, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Anna, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead. Well, um, the first case I would like to share with colleagues is a case that I personally uh, received for a patient I personally received in the emergency department. It is a male patient with 82 years old, uh, with hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and multivessel atherosclerotic disease, mainly from uh, peripheral arter uh, arteries and uh, corona um, carotid arteries. Uh, due to his uh, cardiovascular risk factors, he uh, went uh, to do a transthoracic echocardiogram 
and uh, we have the prior information that his uh, left ventricular ejection fraction were normal until this episode. He was admitted uh, in the emergency department in February of this year with dizziness, dyspnea, uh, hypotension, and a very, very fast rate, um, uh, very fast heart rate. Well, so okay. we we'll give the audience uh, what, a few seconds to look at the ECG and answer the what is this ECG talking about? This is tachycardia, 209 beat per minute, and this is the look. Is it STVT? Uh, is it VT? Is it sinus tachycardia? Is it complete heart block? Now we have uh, those answering. Uh, VT, yes, one answered VT. Uh, let me look at the chat. Please answer. Can I Dr. go? As, as ah, okay. 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 So the, 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 all the audience are saying this is a VT. Go ahead, Anna. Yes. Um, uh, well, the colleagues are correct. In fact, um, following the stepwise approach that we learned in this very course, we can tell that this is a, um, a regular white QRS tachycardia with a left bundle block morphology uh, with an inferior axis. And uh, I, I would say, uh, I would add a left inferior axis because we have um, U1 positive. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, we have um, other criteria to consider this um, uh, AVT. As we learned yesterday and today also, we should look for AV dissociation when we are in doubt if it is a uh, uh, white QRS tachycardia. Is it VT or is it uh, SVT with aberracy? And uh, this VT, uh, this tachycardia was very, very fast. And we could um, we could not identify uh, auricular activity. For instance, we can propose that in V1 we see some activity, but we cannot for sure say that it is an um, uh, auricular activity dissociated. Uh, another criteria to consider this AVT uh, besides AV dissociation is in fact the uh, morpho the QRS morphology. We have a left bundle branch block morphology. In V1, we can see that we have an R wave with a duration equal or greater than 40 milliseconds. Uh, the one set of the R wave to the nadir of the S wave in some precordial list, for instance, let's take um, V2, is greater or equal, as is greater than uh, 60 milliseconds. There is another criteria that it is it's not present in this um, SVG, which is the QR pattern in V6, V6, but we have not this criteria here. And uh, the other uh, important aspect is uh, that we have a transition in uh, lead V3. Although of note, uh, in lead V1 and in lead V2, we have uh, important uh, R waves that we will correlate um, in the next slides. Okay. Well, uh, given the fact that the, the patient presented with the hemodynamic compromise, um, we performed an electrical... Uh... Shock. Ah, okay. Shock. Okay, yes. We performed a cardioversion with um, 150 joules, and the, the patient converted to this rhythm, that we could say it's an actual rhythm. It does not seem to be a sinus rhythm, because of the uh, uh, P. It is, it, it is sinus rhythm. It is sinus rhythm, yeah. Anna, and yeah. with long PR interval and with marked S segment depression in V4, V5, uh, V3. And this is because of the tachycardia and the tissue shock. So uh, he is in sinus rhythm uh, and long PR interval. So I disagree with you in this. So this is sinus. Okay. After the disc shock, but he does have prolongation of the, of the PR interval, as you can see here. Yes, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Well, yeah. um, we also performed uh, analysis and the yeah. troponin and the electrolytes were normal. Yes. I, I would like to mention that sometimes after this shock, you can get elevated troponin, but for this man, he does not. It's, it's very important to exclude acute coronary syndrome as a cause of ventricular tachycardia. We can look at the rhythm strip that there is a PVC in V2 in the rhythm strip down. Show them, uh, Anna. And uh, this is a PVC. And yeah. this looks most probably like the one in the VT. So, uh, yes. Yes, go ahead, Anna. 
Yes, thank you, Prof. Well, uh, I, I can see that you were mentioning atrial premature bits because of the changing morphology of the P wave in lead 2 You are right, but the, yes, Prof. it's mostly sinus, but some atrial premature, like the the bit uh, in the beginning, uh, the second one, the third one, atrial premature, but is back to sinus rhythm, uh, as you can see at the end of the uh, rhythm state of lead 2 So he does have in the rhythm state yes. atrial premature, ventricular premature, and this is the one you are uh, pointing at is the sinus beat. Yes. So it's back to sinus, mm -hmm. but some premature atrial beats and few ventricular premature beats. Go ahead, Anne. Yes, thank you, Prof. Uh, well, then we performed um, an, a summary, uh, a fast TT uh, echo, and he had a depressed left ventricular ejection fraction and the wall, anterior wall uh, motion abnormalities. Uh, we performed the coronary angiography which presented a long LAD stenosis and after discussing with the case with the colleagues from the uh, lab, uh, they recommended just uh, medical optimization because uh, it was a diffuse um, uh, lesion. Uh, well, we in fact optimized his medical therapy and uh, uh, he, the patient received a single chamber ICD. Regarding the medical optimization, we uh, gave him um, after the cardioversion uh, IV amiodarone and uh, also followed by, by oral amiodarone, also bisoparol, and uh, follow the rest of the medication for his heart failure and his coronary disease. Well, um, uh, after some uh, months, uh, he came to the uh, device clinic, uh, complaining also, uh, also uh, complaining of dizziness. And uh, in the ICD interrogation, uh, there were multiple episodes of monomorphic VT. Some of them terminated after ATP and some of them in the monitor zone. I will just um, pass quickly um, yeah. the patient. After this, this consultation, sorry. After this consultation, the, pa the patient underwent um, an EP study. And uh, this is the... the this is a 3D electroanatomical mapping using the CART system. And uh, uh, they are... Uh, using a very high technology to uh, to make pictures of a CT picture on the cartoon uh, in order to visualize the coronaries. Uh, Dr. Anna is showing us the running VT, uh, as we can see the video, and she is uh, pointing out to the focus uh, which uh, where these uh, PVCs come from. Uh, Yal, Anna. Yes, yes. In fact, it was possible to induce the VT, and we verified that the VT came from the anterior aspect of the left ventricular outflow, outflow tract, as we can see here. It was a focal VT, uh, with, uh, although the patient had structural heart, heart disease, uh, we found a focal VT that was in accordance with the morphology characteristics of his ACG. Yes. So when, when we do electrophysiology, we have to induce uh, the tachycardia by electrical stimulation and uh, and then compare the morphology of the 12 feet ECG of the tachycardia to that recorded uh, when the patient came to the emergency room. And we can, uh, uh, we, when we confirm this is his clinical tachycardia, then we can map it. And as I can see from her presentation, she's doing great in Portugal. Uh, she is using a multipolar catheter, which is called Pentaray, and they are using a smart touch uh, catheter, which is a catheter which can measure the, uh, the amount of pressure uh, uh, from the catheter on the tissues. This is very good illustration, uh, Anna. You are doing great. Thank you, Prof. Well, following, just to show, yes, just to show the, the same clinical VT that we saw yes. in SEG, very similar, in just in the AP lab, and then the intracardiac recordings. Here, the intracardiac uh, recordings just before the ablation started. And here, the very same image, uh, 3D reconstructions, while doing the ablation and then in VT, then converting to sinus rhythm. I will read Anna. Great. I will then yeah, go ahead. Yes, we then uh, saw the patients. These were the first um, episodes before the ablation, and these were the, the follow up uh, after the ablation without. Dr. Anna is showing us the, uh, the interrogation of the, of the uh, ICD by uh, the programmer, and uh, the graphs are showing that after ablation, uh, no attacks uh, of VT, no recurrence. Thank you. Um, well, the second case um, was um, a younger patient, uh, also a male patient with the prior myocarditis in 2010 with the mild left ventricular dysfunction. Uh, prior coronary angiography normal, uh, prior MRI uh, with um, late gadolinium enhancement or mean, uh, meaning fibrosis in inferior, lateral and apical wall, um, that is an extensive myocarditis episode 
uh, this patient had a previous um, episode of syncope in 26th of March. At that time, he did not go to the hospital. Uh, some uh, days later, he went to his general practitioner complaining of uh, fainting at home. Uh, her, she asked for a halter and he did the halter in the uh, 3rd of March. Uh, uh, sorry, the date, the date is not good here. This is April. Yes, he did the halter in the 3rd of April and while with the halter and uh, while driving, he had another syncope. He was assisted at the street and then referred to the emergency department. At admission, his blood pressure blood pressure was normal and his heart rate was 170. And this we can give them a, go back the to ECG. Anna. Let's ask the audience: What do you think of this uh, ECG? Is it VT? Is it SVT? And choose, please. This is a 43 year. Okay, we are getting some answers. Uh, one said SVT because it is now. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Anna? No problem. Let them, let them answer. Uh, Dr. Jeanette is saying SVT with aberrancy. We'll wait for two more questions, uh, two more answers. Dr. Soha Shebli is saying fascicular VT. Dr. Mariam uh, is saying SVT with bundle branch block. Dr. Morono Kola is saying VT. Okay. Okay, now we have all options. So. Okay. I can I can swear this is VT from the rhythm strip of lead two where you can see VA dissociation. Show them the VA dissociation down yes. in limb lead two in the rhythm strip. You yes. can we can see strip, yes in here, here yes, and here, and here yes and here, here. so maybe so here I, also. So, so this is a pathognomonic uh, for ventricular uh, tachycardia. So there is VA dissociation. This number one. I I know that you said the QRS is not that wide. Actually yes because. It is, it is, the QRS duration is 124 from the measurements, but if you measure it yourself at the lead two, measure the QRS complex at its widest part. So you can measure it in V6, you can measure it in lead two, in this patient, in this tachycardia. Mm -hmm. the, actually, the QRS complex is wide. The, you, you were deceived by the number which is written by the ECG machine. Uh, actually, it is more than four, it's one, more 100, 160. Yes, 160. Yeah. So it is not correct what is written up that it is 124 milliseconds. So uh, it is not SVT with aberration. It is it is definitely VT from the VA dissociation. The, this is a patient who had myocarditis, rejection fraction 48%, and late gadolinium uh, enhancement in the inferior lateral apical of the left ventricle. This is VT. He had syncope, and he should... What did you do for him, Anna? She, yes, after but... cardioversion, you, you cardioverted him, or you gave him amiodarone? Well... Uh, since the, uh, given the fact he was stable at presentation, although yes. he had a syncope, but he was hemodynamically stable, and we gave him uh, amiodarone, bone, yes. and then uh, perfusion. So show us the ECG, the resting ECG. Yes, this is the yes. ECG after uh, conversion, chemical conversion to sinus rhythm. This ECG does not talk about any infarction or ischemia or ongoing. The, so this is this is a scar in the left ventricle in the area where the gadolinium uh, uh, showed us. Yeah. So what did you do for the patient? Yes, Prof. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we, we, we did uh, more investigations. Well, uh, we repeated the uh, left ventricle ejection, uh, uh, the TTE, which showed again um, dysfunction that we had prior. Uh, we repeated the coronary angiography, it was normal. And we repeated the MRI, it uh, um, uh, showed uh, the previous recorded uh, extensive uh, fibrosis with the one additional um, element that the patient now had biventricular moderate systolic dysfunction, um, which um, made us question if it was just the scar from the previous myocarditis, myocarditis sorry, or an arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy with biventricular involvement. Uh, either, either option, uh, we, the patient received an ICD and the bisoprolo and the more uh, medication, optimized medication for heart failure. Um, this is one of the. This was one of the patients that, after receiving the ICD, the patient asks uh, to us, "How is it to feel a shock?" And we don't know very well how to respond to that. And uh, we told him that when you have one, you will know that it is a shock. <laughs> well, he, soon enough, he he knew what was a shock because at the same day from the discharge, he uh, uh, while arriving at home, he felt four ICD shocks. Uh, he had no loss of consciousness, 
and uh, well, he came back to the hospital and uh, the the um, he the the uh, device recorded five unsuccessful appropriate shocks due to due to sustained monomorphic vt after this he was admitted again and uh, he went to do an ep study and uh, these are uh, the films from the ep study we uh, managed to uh, get the tachycardia induced during the study and uh, we can see here the Pre, um, the Purkinje fibers uh, potentials uh, prior to the QRS here in sinus rhythm and here during tachycardia and here we have the video from the area where the tachycardia was originating uh, at the level of the posterior fascicle. Then we for those who answer the fascicular VT is correct answer. See, yeah, because it is narrow, it looks like right bundle, but it had the was it right inferior axis or the axis was a little bit oh, odd? Uh, sorry, here. Yeah. yeah, so those who answered this as fascicular vindic tachycardia, yes, you are correct. This is a right bundle morphology, and actually, this is a very odd axis. The axis in this uh, ECG, where is the axis with no axis? Huh? EQ, this prof. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, a right superior it, axis prof. It the, is a left to superior. It's, it's a left superior axis. It is a left superior axis, but left leg one is quite strange. Yes, you, Dr. Yusuf, are you with us? Yeah, yes, Dr. Mervat, I see that. Uh, I mean, lead one match at lead V six, so I think it's correct placement of uh, leads. I think it could be uh, because it, it's negative inferior leads. It's in, in um, uh, it's a right superior axis. I would say, uh, and yes. positive AVR. Yes, uh, yes, that's how we call it. Right superior axis. I know. I agree with you that uh, when I first saw this, it doesn't look like a typical fascicular. <laughs> VT yeah. like the uh, Bell Hassan. It's this is different. Yeah. This is car mediated, like you you pointed out, Doctor. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the aspects, Prof, I would like to um, uh, share with colleagues is when we see these uh, TRS in pretorial leads, we think of a supraventricular tachycardia. But when we see the axis, it cannot be a supraventricular yeah. tachycardia with the aberrancy. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, objective of my presentation today is uh, first diagnosis and management of pacemaker mediated cardia and identification of uh, repetitive mandatory entry asynchrony. Uh, our patient is 72 year old male with ischemic cardiomyopathy. Uh, ICD was implanted for secondary prevention. A patient was started on Sotalol for appropriate ICD shocks. He came to our clinic uh, as for up after Sotalol initiation to uh, see for QT or to check QT. Patient was asymptomatic. This is ECG at the presentation. Okay. We can do interactive with the or of presentation or uh, after a finish. Uh, Dr. Rahayam, I have to decide, not me. I'm not the chairman. <laughs> Dr. Rahayam, I think they, they can uh, put the answers in the chat box, maybe. Yes, yes, for, okay. for the sake of time, Osam. Okay. Yes. Yes. Maybe just 30 uh, seconds only. Yeah. Give okay. them the end. Yeah. According you. to this ECG, uh, what's this wide complex rhythm? Is it slow ventricular tachycardia? Is it ventricular pacing? Is it pacemaker, mediated tachycardia, or none of the above? Go back see. to the ECG, please. Yes. Is it slow ventricular tachycardia or normal ventricular pacing or pacemaker mediated tachycardia or none of the above? Okay. Uh, after that, we both, uh, we start interrogation of device and during device interrogation, we uh, we uh, get another episode of the same tachycardia. We can see here that is this is a pacing, b pacing, here a pacing, b pacing, and this is b sensing, which is BBC, the uh, premature mitral tachycardia. After BBC, this is retrograde a wave, and after that b pacing, retrograde a b pacing, and patient started wide complex rhythm that we see in, on ECG here the same. This is sinus, sinus, this is BBC. After BBC, patient starts with wild, wild complex rhythm. So uh, from interrogation, this rhythm is pacemaker mediated tachycardia. Device setting of our patient, the mood was DDD, lower rate 50 beats per minute, above rate 120 beats per minute. B var was sitting at 250 millisecond. Patient was had 30% A pacing and 2.7 percent B pacing. A B Winkibach at 100 beats per minute. In this interrogation, uh, notice retrograde VA time is 440 millisecond, and last beat VA block occurs and this make a tachycardia stops as we see here. So this patient has this make a tachycardia, recurrent fact asymptomatic. Uh, the equation here. Osama, please, Osama, some uh, audience uh, would like you to go to the uh, Casa, a big screen. Can you make it a big screen from down? Go to the full screen. من تحت يا سامي في هنا. تحت تحت. شمال شمال فوق شمال. هنا. Go full screen. Like presentation full screen. F5. F5. You can you can you can press F5. Okay. F5. Okay. F5 on your laptop. No. No. Is it clear? No. What you come up? Press the icon in the back. Okay, I think there is a problem, technical problem in my... my, yes, my... No, I know. Sometimes it doesn't work like this, uh, yes. during the Zoom meditation. Okay, uh, the question here for our patient, what we can do in this case to prevent this maker mediated cardia? What options we have? First option, and it is usual option, is to prolong the valve. But our problem here that is this maker mediated tachycardia initiated with VA interval at 320 milliseconds, which is long. So if we prolong the VAR more than this number, we can get uh, repeated mandatory entry VA synchrony. Second option that we change the mode from DDD to VVI. But in this setting, we will lose A pacing and we 
see, we saw that patient has 30% uh, epacing, which is quite a bit. Third option is to change from BDD mode to AAI mode, but may if it look okay since he has the winky bar. Fourth option is adding PVC response, which will pass A after PVC, but this may result also in repetitive memory entry via synchrony. Patient is asymptomatic, so we decided to monitor for pacemaker tachycardia at 90 beats per minute to see how much he is having. If frequent, we intervene. If not, we will keep the, the, the same setting. This is another, another patient or another uh, another case. This is uh, during interrogation. What we can see here, we can see here that this is uh, sinus beat. Sinus beat. This is BBC. After BBC, this is ret retrograde A wave, not capturing. And after that, this is V pacing rupture. And after V pacing, patient starting pacemaker mediated tachycardia. Yeah, Utama, it is not not capturing. It's not was it's not sensed because uh, you can yeah. see that the the pacemaker make it between brackets. So uh, 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 for uh, this until PVC, you can look at the PVC. Uh, yes. the, the marker, the marker, the marker. Yeah. It's it's a refractory. Yeah. No, no. Just the itself. Okay. So the the device will see will say to himself, if I see a PVC, the A after the PVC, I'm not going to sense. And as you see. This is the Boston, this is how it works. It, it is between brackets. So the device is saying, I'm not saying, say, I will not see, I will not react to this atrium, and I will fire for the next one with the real pacing. Okay? So this is yes. how the device is dealing to avoid this maker mediated tachycardia. Yeah, so okay. Just... It still happens. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, the main point behind this is there's a PVC, like Dr. Mirvat mentioned, there's a retrograde P wave that's in refractory period in the P VARP, and then the device uh, the, uh, paces because there's a timeout of the lower rate. So it paces the A, but it doesn't capture the A. It paces the V, captures the V, and then it goes to retrograde and starts the PMT. So this PMT started by V pacing. And this is like one peat of, uh, I wouldn't say uh, repetitive, but it's non re entering V asynchrony. That's what, and. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a uh, repeated non uh, re entry uh, PMT. And, and let me add the device recognized that this is PMT. You can see, I think this is Medtronic. Recognized PMT and it then prolonged the PVAR and it terminated the arrhythmia. The last yes. one, a sense, like Dr. Mervet mentioned, it's a refractory. So that's why the device didn't pace. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have another case. This is another patient. What we can see here. You can see here that this is a pacing, B pacing, and here is a refractory. After that, a pacing, B pacing. Here, we uh, the, the patient started at a fibrillation. This is repeated memory entry via synchrony lead to short coupling between a refractory and a pacing, and this is lead to at a fibrillation. How to prevent a repeated memory entry via synchrony by decreasing the lower rate limit? or the passive EV delay will increase the V2 A pacing interval and reduce the chance of functional atrial non-capture, thereby lowering the risk of repeated memory entry V asynchrony. Uh, these are three cases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Osama. I think that your presentation, the main points is uh, recognizing PMT. Uh, like Dr. Bayoum did talk about PVARP and PMT. Uh, but now we're seeing, uh, on the other end, we're seeing more of those uh, number, uh, repetitive memory entry V asynchrony because we prolong the PVARP so much at times that uh, the A sense falls in the refractory uh, P, uh, P var period, which is the refractory period uh, like it should. But sometimes if the heart rate is high, patient, uh, like in this case, it looks like a patient's rate response was go, uh, was uh, was activated and there was more A pacing. So the A pacing was just after the refractory, uh, the A refractory sense uh, event by the device, and it led to the last case, you can show the last case, it led to AFib because there's short coupling between the A refractory, which is actual P wave, and the A-PACE, and the patient wanted to AFib because of that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Osama. I, I have uh, one comment. Uh, sometimes in the no notification of the uh, device, uh, you can uh, read that uh, PMT has occurred. Uh, and this not necessarily means that the patient actually had uh, a PMT. Uh, when uh, the pacemaker uh, found uh, uh, an A-sense V-PACE rate that is uh, near the upper uh, tracking rate, the uh, the pacemaker writes this in the notification 
so you can uh, believe that this has actually occurred and you every every time you see this you prolong the pivot you prolong the pivot uh, uh, in these cases this is not necessarily means that pmt has occurred but means that uh, uh, tracking okay the, at, uh, at a rate near the maximum tracking rate in such a case you just increase the maximum tracking rate and or you neglect this notification uh, so as not to pro inappropriately prolong the pvar without uh, a need in these uh, patients thank you i i hope that my uh, my phrase was uh, was uh, understood by you so when you get this notification and the patient is not uh, complaining just increase the upper tracking rate thank great you great point dr yeah thank you and that's Thank why we, we try to review uh, the uh, interrogation. If the rep says there's PMT, so we have to open and make sure it's really PMT, like you said, because if the heart rate goes up to 120, uh, then, uh, yeah, the device would think it's PMT. Uh, yes, yes. Any, any, any track rate near the maximum tracking rate, it will think that this is a PMT. But this PMT is kind of special because, the, as you can see, the, the patient's asymptomatic. The, the VA interval is very long. But the good thing is that because the VA interval is very long, most patients would block. Eventually, this patient blocked on his own. The VA blocked. And then the yes. VA is variable. Sometimes if the patient walks or does mm. something, there's more adrenaline, uh, the VA yes. is shorten. So, yeah. It's a nice case. Thank you, Dr. Usam. Thank you, Dr. Thank Usam. You. Thank you, Dr. Usam, uh, can I ask a question? Okay, Dr. Usam. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Salami, uh, regarding the first case, uh, you told that uh, we have no option, uh, or I, I, I want to know how do you solve this problem. Uh, yes, uh, we monitor only patient uh, at 90 days per minute, and patient was asymptomatic, and more, no more DMT at all. So we uh, keep the setting the same. But uh, uh, in this patient, the PBC that injects uh, uh, P uh, PMT, it can be not appeared. So if you uh, you told that uh, we have no option, but I think we have an option, OK? Uh, as you monitor the patient at uh, 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 9 feet per minute, OK? But you when you see uh, during monitoring, you have any PBCs with this patient or no? Yes, there are some PVCs, yes. But why uh, the PVC didn't do anything in programming? Uh, so sometimes PVCs initiate the PMT, and sometimes PVCs not initiate the PMT. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So uh, if uh, I think uh, I think that we can uh, program this patient, if this uh, PVCs and PA and PA is very long, we can uh, uh, program this patient at DVI move. DVI. DVI. Okay. DVI. D. 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 Doctor or D as in uh, D for doctor. D. Yeah. D. 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 But, but D. Has, uh, so, uh, uh, when you told, when you told your option, okay, give me your option again. Is that uh, option? My, that if uh, option, second option. Uh, 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 yes, there is a fifth option, okay, that you, you didn't want to program as VVI. Uh, to loss asynchrony and you don't program AI to loss uh, to, to fear of uh, AV block okay and yes. prolongation of P bar will uh, will lead to a repetitive number enter the AV v asynchrony uh, and the adding BBC response only PVC response will act when uh, at BBC only okay when he is uh, programming so it is an option and another option if you program uh, uh, use the mood uh, D for doctor VI so it will not happen, uh, pacemaker mediated tachycardia, and you will not lose VA synchrony uh, during VVI, and you will not uh, at a risk of AV block. Yeah, you're, you're right, uh, Dr. Mohammed. I mean, you can, you can do that, yeah? I mean, yes. I mean, yes. I mean you're, you're, you're on track, basically. There's not going to ah, be track. We will not track, OK? Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes so the issue is the tracking mode. Uh, any non-tracking mode will not allow PMT to OK. Ah, yes. This so is nice, that's nice observation. Nice yeah. comment. Uh, Dr. Hasib Raza is asking about if uh, PMT could be recognized by an ICD and lead to shock. I think uh, this is uh, not uh, possible. As uh, the, uh, For the, the device to shock, it should be a sensed uh, event, Dr. Uh, Hasib. Any comment, Dr. Mervet, on this point? No, Dr. Hayam. Uh, uh, my, my point is that we have to, to look at the programmer, what the programmer says. And I like the comment that you said about uh, the the fake or the many times you open Sanjut, this maker medita cardiac and you cannot find it. This is very important what you mentioned. Uh, uh, and then for the question of Dr. Hasib, that is uh, PMT couldn't be mistaken by the ICD and P shock because this is not a sensed ventricular rhythm. It should be a sensed ventricular rhythm for the ICD to discharge a shock. Yes.
Yeah, I think it is good evening to everyone. My name was, uh, it has been introduced as Yona Gandhi. Uh, I am head of Elect Office of Pacing Unit in Java Kuwait Cardiac Institute. This is found in Dalisa. I'm um, also an acting president for Device and Arithmia Society of Tanzania. Um, so I feel honored to have been given uh, this chance to present through the AFRA uh, presentation. Um, on behalf of the Jaka Kote Cardiac Institute, we really appreciate for such consideration for us. So, I will start my case presentation. As well. So, are you following me? Yes. Okay. So, I'm presenting to you. I can hear somebody is making a little bit of interference, please, Prof. So, I'm presenting to you a 42 year old man. This is the, it's known to us for the past two, I mean, six, for the past six weeks. Uh, he was referred from one of the hosts around Dar es Salaam with diagnosis of heart failure and cardiomyopathy that was diagnosed almost uh, 20 weeks prior to to coming to us. So we kept this patient on, on optimal medical therapy. However, despite the optimism of the medical therapy, this patient actually continued to experience uh, florid symptoms of heart failure, and actually this necessitated him to, to to experience recurrent admissions due to heart failure. So, this patient had uh, echo down showing direct chambers, and the GH infraction was falling below 30%. Uh, the ECG that was done was showing this patient to be in sinus bit, and the QLS uh, morphology actually was conforming with the American Heart Association in the European Heart Rhythm Society uh, pattern that is actually telling us it is left left band branch block. And we can appreciate and keep in mind that in V1 we are seeing the QS pattern in the lead one here, find find that the other wave is prominent. So based on the uh, combination of the symptoms of this patient, especially the factor heart failure on medical therapy reduced ejection fraction, uh, this patient actually had other I mean as I said uh, had already diagnosed cardiomyopathy, and actually we did it and that we showed there was no any coronary disease. So we end up we ended up diagnosing, diagnosing the cardiomyopathy as non ischemic. So the other issue. Okay. Uh, can you mute everyone, please? Thank you, co host. I came host in order I can uh, shut down the microphones. Please um, mute all, Dr. Merbat. Yes. Okay, I will. Okay, now everyone is muted, except the, you and the producer. Randy, go ahead. So, where can I start? Did everyone follow me? I'm not sure whether the previous slide were. Yes, we are following you now. We are. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, the main issues on this patient were refractory heart failure. Uh, while she was on the medic, optimal medical therapy presented with the reduced ejection fraction at the low 30%. Uh, and we ruled out uh, obstructive coronary artery disease and therefore we reached a diagnosis of non ischemic cardiomyopathy. The other issues were recurrent admission due to heart failure. And the ECG com were confirmed uh, to have features that, that were suggesting uh, the simple. So the combination of these symptoms actually um, made this patient to have a recommendation for cardiac risk organization therapy uh, in order to improve symptom, symptoms of heart failure and also reduce the morbidity and the mortality of this patient. I know this patient was 42 years old and according to recommendations uh, based on the uh, pub published, uh, published results actually on the EP Europe's um, with a, a study uh, with a title as age stratified in comparison of prognosis in cardiac therapy with and without a prophylactic defibrillator for non ischemic cardiomyopathy. We recommend any individual who is coming to, 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 uh, to receive risk synchronization therapy below the age of 60%, then it is recommending that that patient should be receiving CRTD. And this actually goes hand in hand to what we are learning yesterday through our, our, our presentation. So, in this patient, actually went on implanting CRT instead of CRTD because this patient could not raise money to pay for CRT service. And also, uh, in our store, we had only CRT available, so we had to opt for this. But yet, the, uh, the indication was class one indication to undergo this colonization. So, based on the consideration of these symptoms, this patient actually had um, a, a combination of factors that uh, were defining this patient to benefit from CRT. And actually, we classified this patient as a high responder attributable to presence of wide QRS complex, the pattern of left bound branch block, which was typical in this patient and also the diagnosis of non-ischemic which was confirmed 
to this patient with reduced ejection fraction, with the exception to the uh, female gender, that this man, I mean, this patient was a man. So based on that, those factors, we, we predicted, predicted that this patient actually is going to benefit from uh, CRT treatment. <coughs> so we went on with the procedure of our photos uh, through the left subclavian artery. And this is a LAO projection. Actually, we are using this projection in order to, to determine the suitability of, of, of the uh, coronary sinus anatomy. And here you can find this very nice postural branch that we need to target in this LAO projection that we use uh, in order to, to, to implant the, the leaf. But also, we are using this RIO projection. Actually, it's telling you a lot about of the uh, basal region so that we avoid the from the from the apex. And after having assessed later now, we can see the LAO projection with the LOB lead implanted in the postural branch. And from the RIO, object, uh, I mean, RIO projection now, you can see the distal lead is not reaching the apex, so we are just uh, hanging around the basal region. So uh, it is from the previous recommend recommendation that the best predictor of good CRT response in those patients who are receiving CRT is the presence of other wave amplitude in V1 and V2. As you can appreciate this, uh, the, actually, this is interesting that in V1, you need to change the QS pattern to R wave. And from V2, you need to change QS to RS. And also in V1, you need to change the prominent R wave to QS pattern so that you predict probably the selection of the area that you are passing is good. So this is what we obtain in our patient. As I said, you, you have to keep it back um, of your mind to, so that you remember what's going to change after we pass. Now here we are seeing this is a narrow QRS complex with the possible R wave. That we changed the QS in the V1, and now it's the predominant R wave. In lead one now, this is predominant uh, QS. Uh, we thought probably this patient is presenting good results, and the QRS now has changed from 170 millisecond, and now it's 128 millisecond. It's uh, showing us we have well narrowed the QRS, uh, and therefore probably we uh, are trying to minimize the disease in this patient. So after uh, just two weeks, this patient actually improved in terms of the symptoms of heart failure, walking in distance increased. And the, actually, by this time, this patient is back to his routine, and he never came back complaining of heart failure. And since the CRT, he has never been admitted yet anymore. So as I said, you need to optimize the anatomy that you're assessing so that when you implant the lead, you get the good results, and the patient gets a um, good outcome so that you prevent heart failure. But sometimes the things doesn't run as you, you expect. Sometimes you, 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 you encounter I mean, it's a very suboptimal anatomy. So when you are faced with the suboptimism of the anatomy now, there are, this is a challenge that you need to address. And one of the uh, approach to address where the anatomy is not suitable is selection of the lead. Now, uh, the companies have come with the uh, uh, special leads, for example, at any performer quadripolar LV lead. This has got uh, uh, mini three shapes, which have varying angles, and, and actually they can go to different anatomy based on the selection of the lead. Also, they are impregnated with the steroid on all electrodes, enables, enabling it so that the uh, chronic go up. And also enables you to stay in the basal area so that you can uh, avoid passing the the, 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 ap the apex and also the phrenic nerve. But also the, between electrode and electrode, you find the distance very short, and this reduces the chance that you are going to pass the phrenic nerve. As we can appreciate here, if you're having the longer distance here, the, the, the electric field from electrode to electrode now can can stimulate the phrenic nerve, and therefore necessitate you may either to do lead do surgery, and when you do. Um, the operation for the second time, the chance that you are going to get uh, the site where the threshold is very high, the stability is very low, is very high. Is, therefore, the outcome might not be very good for the patient. Now, the current electrodes, uh, they are very short. Dr. Yona, uh, yes. sorry, you. you have two minutes just to, to make sure. Okay. We... Thank you. Yeah, I have on the two sides. So having a special leads now, you can minimize these complications that have been uh, uh, telling you. So these are the leads that I've been show, I mean, I mean, uh, discussing. You can find the S-type lead. This actually is suitable for larger, but low tortuous vessels. And when you have a small, high tortuous vessel, then this the straight one is, is the best option. Now, when you have vessels with the intermediate characteristics, then you can get <coughs> a uh, type of lead. So another uh, approach to solve for uh, suboptimal anatomy actually is by using a uh, Pacing a logarithm in the program known as a MPP, multiple uh, point pacing. Actually, this uh, allows to pace from two LV lead electrodes instead of one point. Um, the potential benefit of multiple point uh, point pacing actually in, uh, involves the capture capturing large area of the LV surface, also engaging a uh, big area around the scar where there's normal tissues, also improving the uh, the pattern of depolarization, also improving the both acute and chronic hemodynamics in this patient, therefore ending up with improved release colonization. And it has been found to be very safe and also improves the, uh, both acute and chronic outcomes. So in summary, this is what I've been saying. In order to get good outcome, actually, other challenge you need to, 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 to take okay. into consideration, actually, to, to optimize the AV timing. 
at this palidemia, at this anemia. And when there's less than 90% person, then you have to go to the program, look for the um, different, uh, actually, uh, algorithm, for example, actual tracking recovery conducted the actual response and event percent response, so that this can minimize, uh, can maximize the outcome of the patient. But also the selection of the patient is very important. Should, should not select the patient with an RQRS complex. So this I, I've already said. So okay, with, with that, I thank you so much. Yes, Prof. Uh, you have to finish. Yeah, um, this is my last slide. We thank Professor, uh, this our slide. We have a conference next year. Uh, I think uh, we are invited, Professor Mevet, and everyone watching us now can join us. Maybe can you just contact us in case they are just to Zanzibar for this conference. And this is my last slide. Uh, having done a successful implantation, and now everyone is smiling here. Thank you.